Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. And all, a big welcome all to the new subscriber who subscribed recently. Thank you for that. And it really helps me out and gives me more incentive to grow the channel. Uh, right. Uh, today I'm just going to do an update on my homegrown or trying to grow lion's mane mushroom. Right. This is the bag which you saw I was inoculating and that was on the 28th of April. Now it's two weeks and looks pretty much colonized not every place but it starts pinning and but i think the bottom is a bit dry so i want don't want to make any la uh, later and putting into into fruiting mode and that's what we're going to do today so I've been doing some more research and research and research and watch different channels and different how other people do it, growing mushrooms at home. And with the lion's mane, fruiting, it's, it's easier than others. There are mushrooms that like to grow from the top, top fruiting, and there are mushrooms that like to grow from the sides like the shiitake for instance and so i've been doing but the lion's mane it's not too bothered top side whichever way so so i decided to go for the side fruiting because even though there's a lot of pins on the top but i find the best area will be here so I have a go and see what happens. So that's all we can do. We have to collect our own data, our own experiences. Even though, yeah, we can look at other people's uh, ideas, but what works for one might not work for us or for me or for you, whoever. So we just learn as we go along. So it's not that expensive. And I got some more, uh, Mushrooms coming, like the Raishi and some more lion's mane. Uh, so yeah, so we have a go, and it looks like I, I, the, I have no contamination at this point. I can't see any mold or any bacteria growth. So that method for me at, at this at that stage works. Sterilizing with the microwave, but you only can do that really at home. Commercially, it's not viable. You got you gotta have either a, a pressure cooker or a claver. So it kills ninety nine point nine of bacteria, yeast, and fungi, but it might struggle with the like uh, Bacillus, E. coli. It might struggle to kill kill them in. Uh, in the microwave so I've done my research there as well but what I want to do is on probably one of the next episode is actually check the temperature after I sterilize the microwave for a half an hour and see what the core temperature is in the substrate yeah as I say spore fungi uh, spore bacteria like the bachelor it will probably struggle but we see how much temperature how how high we're going to get the temperature because you need to get about the same height as uh oh my son's phone <laughs> uh as the pressure cooker which is about run about 120 on 15 psi so uh, we do some more research and some more trials there but so as i said it worked i put the uh, uh mushroom just on the top and made some trenches on the, or trenches on the side and let it run down so because if there would be any bacteria on the top or coming in then 
it will there's no chance for, for it for food because the mycelium is already there and has taken over so so that's the theory behind it and I quite like the idea from that channel if I can find it I'll put a link in it so but okay let's let's get going and uh, so what do we need so we got our bag which is a three pound bag I still like to use alcohol wipes a knife because when we stab it inside so I don't know how deep I think it's colonized in there but I want to be sure so I want to clean it at first stab it inside and then uh, so what else do we need oh yeah we need some bags of course we're doing it at home I've got two two different sizes here size bag and there's a bigger one here which I probably can cut in half so there's another bag here so basically we want to create an atmosphere like in a greenhouse a little bit we have in the kitchen here we have about room temperature I measured it around about 21 it's comfortable so they're suggesting commercially to fruit at about 23 so two degrees okay it might take a few days longer or so I don't know and uh, I just got a yeah then I go and get a spray bottle and I boiled some water I used boiled water just in case so we, we don't really want to introduce anything at this stage not forcefully so okay let's get you set up or set down somewhere right I've got some alcohol I've got a fruiting block some towels so first what I do is do my hands I mean a lot of people say oh it's not necessary but just to be on the safe side it doesn't hurt I mean I don't use any gloves but it doesn't hurt so but as we say we're going to do on this side so what I do is I'm going to rip the filter off well, okay. there you go. Right, I'm gonna make a cut because I want to do side folding. So what I want to do is I want to fold from this side. So I'm gonna get all the air out. So, but I want to cover the filter. No air whatsoever. So, okay, let, let me get some tape. I'm going to put it all down. Let me get some tape. So, but also what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a strap around this side. So basically we want to fold it from this side. And I'm going to put a strap around there because we still have some folds. And there still could be oxygen down here, which I don't want. I want to cut off the top part from the bottom part and the oxygen comes in from here 
so it won't try to fruit further down so all the energy has to go up through here so that's what i'm going to do i haven't got any elastic uh any rubber bands but the solution is you can use a few cable ties but We can make something out of cling film. We just gotta be really resourceful. So I just twist a little bit. It makes itself like a string. Right, it's about sort of a couple of inches under the, from the top. We're just gonna put a restrictor on there. Roughly. That should cut it off from the outside world. <laughs> right, and then, I mean, most of the mycelium is around about here. So, I'm just gonna make a couple of slits in there, Let's say X. So, let's go quite deep. Because the block is not very big, so I don't want to make the cut too big. And I forgot the alcohol. <laughs> but, I put a new blade in it, so yeah, there you go. This is what you, this is what happens if you're doing a video and you forget things. So basically, just make little X marks the spot, and so as I said, what you're going to do is building a tent. So. But I do will I will wipe the inside of our little tent. Oops. Because I have opened it earlier. So you never know. Even though they're brand new bags, say you don't know. And with mushrooms you don't really take want to take too many chances even though that lion's mane is quite a forgiving mushroom but so i don't know but because of what just a silly mistake what well, it wasn't really a mistake but from There you go. At least you have peace of mind. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut. Let's see if, we, if, if it's going to fit. If it doesn't, you can use a bigger one. So I think it's a bit tight, so we're going to discard this one and get another one. bigger bag I think it's 500 by 760 millimeters uh, you can either fold it or I just cut it off there you go
or you can make yourself or build yourself so like uh, what you put over cakes and just cover it with a uh, plastic so again let's take a bit of alcohol quickly but it's still pretty wet new to this and you know, it's quite fascinating even though I, I like foraging for mushrooms and for many many years but it's quite exciting to uh, actually grow your own or trying to well it keeps your mind whoops, your mind occupied to try new things see even if it doesn't work in the first attempt you just adjust, correct your mistakes, try again until you succeed. That's what it's all about. This is how the commercial grower started. Learn from others and uh, implement it. Right. Okay. So, so you have a little, that's all you need. Little tent. So what you're going to do is just cut some holes in. But I don't want to cut the holes too high up. Because moisture rises and I don't want the moisture to go out of the top. So you're going to cut some into the sides and then as, hopefully as it starts growing, you can then adjust and look, look at the, uh, the fruiting body and see how it reacts. Does it turn the color? Does it go right? Is it too dry? Too wet? So well, that's then is you have to nurse it like a nurse. So I'm gonna cut some. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, we got some holes. Uh, another one. Mm -hmm. Take both sides. Right, that should be plentiful. So basically, it need it needs oxygen now. So yeah, so there you go. Just get a spray bottle out and spray it, and then two or three times a day just spray inside the bag and just miss the miss the, you can miss the whole bag or just the entrance so yeah so that's it for this block let's put it to one side but because the only Because I only used half the the, the spool, I started to make another block. This is a four pound block, but unfortunately I didn't have any more fruiting bags, so I had to use uh, spawn bags, which should be alright because when, as I can see, it's racing. It's been now seven, six days. Since inoculation, I've done it exactly the same way as the other, as the first one. But what I what I did do is I actually mixed the spawn with a substrate in the bag, and then sterilized it or pasteurized. I don't know. They call it sterilizing from the microwave. Maybe it's pasteurizing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so yeah, and it's starting to race. And so we see what happens with this one. This one, I changed the, the ratio of the water a little bit. I put more, added more water and it looks more, more solid than the other one. And on the next one, as soon as the next uh, spawn comes in, I 
change it slightly not oh well you see how i think that should be all the moisture i will post the recipe if it works if i'm happy with it until i'm not until i'm happy i will not post the recipe and as i say i looked at some recipes the old cups 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 but what i got is sawdust so the cup version doesn't work and nobody gives you measurements really, so i had to figure it out myself uh, so anyway that looks pretty good it's colonizing right nicely i can't see any contamination as i say i've done the same uh, after i sterilized the substrate open the bag put the mushroom on top create a channel on four sides let it run down and left the spawn on top i didn't mix the spawn in into it or anything so that's the reason i explained earlier why because the spawn is already totally colonized so there's no way from for bacteria to find food up there so that's the theory behind it Let, let's see how we end up with an end product and this are my top fruit but depends on how, how it's going to look this one are my top fruit because I I got no grow bags, I only got uh, yellow bags. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Any questions, please ask. Leave the comments below or any suggestions. And uh, yeah, I just want to say the reason why I want to grow is uh, lion's mane because I never tasted them before. And of course, also of the health benefits. I'm, I, as I make my own tincture anyway, but I want to have some fresh lion's mane, organic lion's mane that I grew and I know it's got nothing else in it. So, anyway, we see you on the next episode. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye bye.